In the last video, we learned about group structure. In this video, we will take a look at it in practice. Let's just start by defining group. Group is an interface of any type A that has a binary operation on it, which we call it concat here. Concat receives two parameters of type A, combines them and returns another value in the same type. It also has a property called empty, which acts as an identity value for combining values. So combining and concatenating a value in type A with empty gives you back that value. Group also has an inverse method on it, which receives a value of type A and returns the inverse of it in the same type. In the previous video, I mentioned that groups are monoids. So we can simply extend group from monoid here and we can get rid of empty and concat because those now are coming from monoid. Let me import monoid here. And by the way, if monoid looks new to you, I have a whole video on this. So please check out my video on monoid. For our first instance of a group, let's go with the most popular one meaning adding numbers. So add group of type group of number. The concat method on it looks like this. It receives two numbers and simply add them together. The empty value or identity value for adding numbers is zero because adding any number with zero gives you back that number. And inverse of any number is simply minus 1 times that number. Or we can simply say minus a. In order to try this, imagine you have a wallet and we want to keep track of how much money we put in it, meaning deposit into it, and how much money we take out of it. So let's define a constant called wallet balance. And let's start with an empty wallet, no balance, right? Add group.empty. And in our next step, let's put $80 into it. Then we want to, for example, add another $20 to it. And finally, let's take out maybe $10. So we can now say inverse. If I try this, go to log, wallet, balance. If I save, we see 90 on the right side. For our next example, let's implement an encryption technique called Caesar Cipher. This is actually named after Julius Caesar. He used this encryption technique to protect his confidential messages. Today, we know that Caesar's cipher provides no security and it can be easily broken. But it can still be a good example for explaining groups. The encrypt function looks like this. It receives a plain text in a string, a key in integer, which we show in number in TypeScript, and it returns a string which is going to be our ciphertext. The key tells the function how many times each character should be shifted to make the ciphertext. The decrypt function, similar to encrypt, receives an a string, which is a ciphertext, a key, which is an integer, and returns the plain text in a string. For simplicity, let's assume that our functions are case insensitive and we only encrypt the alphabets and don't touch other characters. Let's create a list of characters that we care for encrypting, which are lowercase English alphabet characters. Now each character in the alphabet constant 
has a unique index in this string, which we can now use instead for our arithmetic calculations. In the previous video, I showed you the Caesar cipher is a group. But before implementing it, let me create more space here. And all right. So const Caesar group of type group of number looks like this. Let's think about concat first. What are we concatting and combining here? What are these X and Y parameters? These are our actions, right? So we are composing our encrypt function with different keys, which are simply the shift actions. So for example, shifting by two and then shifting by three is same as shifting by five, right? But what happens if our shift goes beyond the boundary of alphabets? Like if we try to compose 25 and then one. Let's think about it. Based on our alphabet's constant, which its length is 26, if we shift A 25 times, we get to Z. We know if we want to shift more, we still need to stay in our alphabet set in order for our structure to be magma. So if we shift Z by one, we are rotating back to A. So for composing two shifts, we need to sum them up and then take modulo of alphabets dot length to ensure that the resulting shift value stays within the range of alphabets. The empty value for our group is shifting by zero to ensure that composing any shifts with empty is same as that shift. And the inverse value for each shift action is a shift that composing them together is like doing zero or in another words, doing an empty shift. So inverse is the shift of A and maps it to alphabets length minus A. And we still need to take modulo alphabets length to stay in the range. All right, now we are ready to implement the encrypt function. So const encrypt of type encrypt. It receives a plain text and the key. And what we do, first we are going to convert this string into lowercase. Then we want to split the string into an array of characters. And now we are ready to map over our characters. The first thing we do is we find the unique integer for our character, which is its position inside the alphabets string. So alphabets dot index of C. If you couldn't find that character, it means that we don't care for encrypting it. So we're going to return the exact character. But in case we find it, we're going to encrypt it. So new index is by using our group. We're going to concat and shift our index by our key. And finally, we're going to return that character. At the end, we again need to join our array of characters to create this string. And by the way, I have a typo in my scissor group. Let me make a little bit more space. Let's implement our decrypt function. It receives a ciphertext and a key. And what it does, it's, it's going to encrypt 
our ciphertext with the inverse of our key. And what it does is that it neutralizes the effect of encrypting of a plain text with the same key. Let's try this. Console log, encrypt. Let's do it with hello world and a key tree. If I save, we get this on the right. But if I decrypt this, with the same key. If I save, we get the hello world back again. If I change our key to something else like seven and save, we get the same result. As an exercise, try to move around these characters inside this alphabet string. Does this make any difference when we encrypt and decrypt with the same key. And with that, thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.